So before we get into today's episode, I just want to let you know that this week I'm opening up enrollment for my signature program, the Online Summit Program. Specifically, I'm looking for no more than 10 hikers who want to get strong and pain-free so they can conquer every adventure. If this sounds like you and you want to find out a bit more, shoot me a message to the Summit Strength page on Facebook or Instagram with the words, I'm interested. From there, we can have a chat and see if and how that the program might be a good fit for your goals and situation. So whether you have a big trip in your sights, or you want to finally make a change to your knee, back, foot, or ankle pain, or you simply want to be in a great physical position so you can be confident to jump into any adventure that you want, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Shoot me a message, we can have a chat, and we'll go from there. Hey, my name is Rowan Smith, and I want to welcome you to the Training for Trekking podcast. Now, this is the world's very first podcast, which is entirely dedicated to helping you train, prepare, and conquer your upcoming hike, trek, or mountain adventure. So once a week, I'm going to be giving you quality and practical information on the subjects of physical preparation for trekking, dealing with attitude, and nutrition on the trail, so you can know everything you need to be doing to have the best chance of a safe, enjoyable, and successful adventure. So now you know what you're in for, let's get into today's episode. All right, hello, hello, guys. Today we are talking all about shoulder pain when hiking with a pack. Now, the reason I want to talk about this today is it is a super, super common issue for so many hikers out there. And so many people experience this all different types of shoulder discomfort when they do have a pack on from all the people who, you know, they might literally put a five or six kilo pack and get pain pretty much straight away to some people who just end up long days on the trail and they're in a bit of discomfort. And this is a topic that I've never really talked about so much on this podcast, mainly for the fact that shoulders in themselves, you know, shoulder pain does get a bit tricky. And shoulders are relatively complex joints. There's so much going on in there. There's so many different causes to shoulder discomfort and shoulder pain. And 99% of the time, I would definitely recommend if you are struggling with shoulder pain with your hiking and your pack carrying to book yourself into a physio or a physical therapist, get a proper assessment, get a proper diagnosis and figure it out what is going on there. So you know you're doing the right things. And I'd strongly, strongly, strongly urge any hiker, if you haven't done that, to go about that and get into it. But beyond that, Sometimes I do know people go see a physio or physical therapist and they might be a little bit disappointed from the, from the answers. They might just get one or two exercises to do and they do it for a while but don't see any change. Or maybe you're just not at that stage where you think it's worth booking in and it's just sort of a niggle, it's just sort of an ache, but it's not something that's really pressing you a huge amount of concern, but maybe you would might like to make a change on it either way. So today I'm going to be talking you through some general strategies which can help a number of different types of shoulder pain. It's never going to be as good as a diagnosis and a specific recommendations, obviously. But in general, if you do struggle with some type of shoulder pain when hiking with a pack, here are a few strategies which may be worthwhile looking at and incorporating in your training. So essentially, I'm going to be going through five different areas, a couple you may have heard before and they're pretty common sense, a few that you may not have considered first. So to start with, in general, if you are struggling with some type of shoulder pain, you probably want to look at some type of mobilization around the muscle supporting that joint. Now, the reason I say that is lots and lots and lots of people, it's a very, very common thing, is our shoulders get very, very tight. Purely for the fact the way we spend a lot of our time sitting down, hunched over a little bit, whether it's work, whether it's on the couch, whether it's in the car, and certain muscles typically do get a little bit of tight. And what this does is it pulls the shoulders in a certain direction, adds a little bit extra pressure in there, and day to day it's not that bad, but all of a sudden when you put an extra load on your back with a pack, when you're hiking, when you're doing repetitive movements with that load on, the shoulders can get a bit uncomfortable. So typically there's three areas we typically want to look at uh, mobilizing and you're probably going to be pretty aware if they're tight or not. 
So the first is the pecs or the chest, which most people are pretty aware of. And most people have probably stretch this here and there and, you know, every once in a while when they have got tight shoulders. And this is essentially just loosening up the muscles on the front of the chest, which do go across the shoulders. And if they're tight, they can pull the shoulders a bit forward. They can put a little bit extra pressure going through. So typical stretches here, you might go into a doorway, you might put your um, elbow up at 90 degrees, lean into that, feel a stretch. You might do the same thing with a straight arm and one of them might feel a bit better than the other or whatever it may be. And typically most people have done that stretch once in a while, um, but the mistake most people make when they're doing this, and I probably guarantee you've done this at one stage or another, is if you're, un you're uncomfortable, you know the stretch gives a bit of relief, you go do the stretch and you hold it for 20 seconds and that's it. And you'll do it every once in a while. But if this muscle is tight, that's not really going to do a huge amount. It will feel good, but it won't really change that range of motion. It won't really mobilize that joint over the long term. So if you are struggling with this and you are trying to stretch this area, mobilize it, you probably want to be holding your stretch for at least 60 seconds. And you want to be doing it multiple times through the week. So just doing a stretch here and there, it's not going to make a difference. We'll, we'll feel good, absolutely, but it's not going to make a long-term difference. So you want to think of different ways you can fit this into your week, whether it's a daily routine, whether it's fitting into you know your rest periods and your strength training, whether it's just a warm-up, a cool-down, whatever it may be. But the first area you want to be looking at is stretching your chest or your pecs. The second area you want to be looking at when it comes down to this, and one that is often neglected for people with this type of discomfort, is stretching your lats, which are the big muscles on the side of your back. Now, essentially, your lats, they are just as responsible as with your chest for what's called internal rotation of your shoulder, so rotating your shoulder inwards. And if they get super tight, they can also pull the shoulder into this position, which can lead to a little bit of discomfort. And while most people are pretty familiar with stretching their chest out, most people probably haven't really explored loosening up the lats. So a really, really easy way to stretch this is literally going into a door frame, grabbing the door, leaning back or pulling back with one arm straight and just sort of pulling your torso backwards while holding onto the door. If you don't know what that looks like, you can go into YouTube, type in doorway lat stretch, L-A-T stretch, and you can see what I mean. But putting that into your weekly routine, kind of the same with this chest stretching, making sure you're stretching for over a minute, doing that regularly, that probably will make a bit of a difference. And then the third area that can get tight, and it probably doesn't need quite as much work as those other two areas, but one that's probably worth considering, is literally just stretching your upper traps or basically your neck. And just doing some very, very gentle stretches around your neck. You don't want to be forcing anything or doing anything too crazy on this area, but doing some gentle stretches there can generally relieve things. Now, when you're looking at this, you probably want to be making sure this is a regular thing, as I said, and just trying to see where you can fit these stretches in into your week on a regular routine. And if you can string together a few times a week for multiple minutes over a few weeks, you probably will start to notice a bit of a difference. So that's area number one, mobilize the pecs, the lats, and also stretch out the neck. Area number two, if you are struggling with shoulder pain while pack carrying, is looking at doing some upper body strengthening. Now, we always talk about lower body strengthening on this podcast, and obviously that is the main muscles that are working when you're hiking. But we also, if you, we also don't want to neglect the upper body because it does do certain things on the trail, particularly when we have a heavy pack. And if you are struggling with shoulder pain and you haven't explored strengthening up this, uh, this area, it's probably something you want to look at. Now, typically, we want to break this up into two two sort of uh, categories. We talk, want to talk about stabilization and we want to talk about strengthening. Now, when I say stabilization, essentially we want to sort of strengthen up the little muscles that are responsible for stabilizing the scapula, which is on the back. Now, the scapula is super, super, super important about stabilizing the shoulder. And if that's not quite strong enough, then the shoulder can get in a little bit uncomfortable. It can fall out of position. And, you know, when you're carrying a pack, it can be, you know, not so comfortable. So essentially, we want to focus a little bit on stabilizing and strengthening up these stabilizing muscles around the scapula. So this doesn't really take a huge amount. And it does, they're not really huge exercises, but they do require a bit of concentration. And you might do things like what are called WYTs, and literally WYT, you can plug that into YouTube or whatever, or scap retractions or something that's going to um, basically strengthen up those little muscles. They're, they're very small movements. They're a little bit tedious, but they are important. And you might throw those movements into your warm-ups on the regular. You might do it in your rest periods during your normal strength training or whatever it may be. But that's the first area you want to look at. 
Now, the second area you want to look at is just strengthening up the upper body, upper body muscles as a whole. So not quite as targeted and small as those, um, those little scap exercises, but actually just strengthen up the general, general upper body. Now, as opposed to looking at this area and say, okay, you want to strengthen up the pecs, you want to strengthen up the lats, you want to strengthen up this, 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 and this, that can get a little bit too much. And you end up doing, you know, a, a dozen different exercises to try and target every single muscle individually. What I'd recommend as a hiker in this situation and any other hiker who's looking at doing upper body training is breaking up your upper body strength work into simply pushing and pulling motions. So pushing is as simple as it sounds when you're actually pushing out. Pulling is when you're pulling in. Now, literally just breaking that up, push, pull. If you have an even balance between those things, typically you're going to make sure you hit all the muscles that you really do need to hit. And that's the easiest way you can break it up without having to go down the route of targeting every single muscle individually. So typical exercises you might do for an upper body pull is some type of row. So whether it's like a TRX row, a dumbbell row, a pack row, a towel row, something like that, where horizontally you've got a weight or resistance out in front of you and you're pulling in. Opposite to that, a pushing exercise you might start with is something like some type of push-up, whether it's on the floor, whether it's on your knees, whether it's on a bench, maybe a dumbbell press, maybe a bench press if your shoulders are happy with that, or whatever it may be. And that's probably the typical two areas you want to be looking at. And those particular movements is a horizontal pull and a horizontal push. Now, if you've been doing them and say you're doing two exercises of each of those per week, and you've been doing that for a while and you're still feeling like you can explore some other areas, then you might start looking at going, adding in a a vertical pull and a vertical push. So this is exactly the same thing, but as opposed to doing the uh, the motion in a horizontal plane, you're going above your head in a vertical plane. So a vertical vertical pull would be something like a pull-up, a chin-up, a lap pull-down. It can be tricky to do at home, but it is very, very easy in a gym. And a a vertical push would be something like a shoulder press straight above your head with a dumbbell, a pack, or a barbell. Now, fair warning, if you do have, you know, sore shoulders, a lot of people will struggle with that sort of vertical pushing motion when you're pushing something straight above your head. And a lot of people will struggle with discomfort there. So if that's you and you're trying to add this movement in, as opposed to going straight up, you might want to do something that's a bit more of an angle and a bit more of an incline. So you might do like an incline dumbbell press where you're on a bench and sort of a 45 degree angle, or you might do something with a landmine, which is a sort of particular piece of equipment in a gym, or you might be just doing incline push-ups or something like that. And typically, if someone is getting shoulder pain, those horizontal pushing motions can be relatively uncomfortable. But just to sum up on the strengthening side of things, you want to be looking at um, helping stabilize the scapula with some of those little movements and regularly doing that. And you also want to strengthen up the upper body as a whole by looking at that pushing and pulling movement, finding a balance between those two exercises and consistently working on there. And that's probably what any hiker should be focusing on to help strengthen up their upper body. Now, the third area you want to look at is those th- those two things are a bit of a long-term strategy and you know, you're know you going to apply that week after week after week. The third thing I'd recommend is any hiker doing if you do struggle with shoulder pain with a pack is when you're actually hiking, just before you hike, please make sure you warm up and just loosen up those muscles. So typically I recommend, you know, loosen up the ankles, the hips before you hike. But if you do struggle with this issue, you want to be making sure the shoulders are relatively happy. So you probably go through those same stretches that I'd recommend before, doing something for your pecs, something for your lats just before you go on the trail. And you can even do that a few times while you're on the trail. If it does start to pull or tug or get uncomfortable, they're things you can lean into and they're pretty straightforward. So definitely, definitely warm up. The fourth tip I would recommend, which is one you may not have heard before, unless I've talked about in this podcast before and completely forgotten, um, but this is trying to stick to nose breathing pace while you're on the trail. Now, I often talk about this as an, a mark of intensity and in, in the sense of sticking to nose breathing pace um, shows that you're sticking to a certain, you know, certain intensity, which is going to be relatively efficient and you can go and go and go and, you know, you generally don't get too tired with this particular pace. Specifically for shoulders, how this works is when we get to the stage where we're huffing and puffing on the trail and we're taking big breaths and we might be gasping up hills or just generally huffing and puffing, essentially what happens is our chest and our shoulders do lots and lots and lots and lots of little movements. So our shoulders go up and up and up and up and up, up and down when we're huffing and puffing. And, you know, that's just how we respond. Now, day to day, that's no issue. 
And for most people, that's no issue. That's just what happens. But if you've got a pack on your back and you already know your shoulders get uncomfortable, what happens here is when you're doing that huffing and puffing, you end up doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tiny little repetitions under load. And that could be a really, really big contributing factor to these shoulders getting uncomfortable because it might be just a sense of those muscles getting super tired and super tired because you're doing so much of this. And so one easy fix or easy change around this is really, really putting some consciousness um, and some effort and really, really trying your best when you're hiking to stick to the pace where you're constantly breathing through your nose. And as you're breathing in, you're trying to feel the belly expand as opposed to just the chest and the shoulders going up and down. Now, this does take some practice. It does take some concentration. But this is one simple thing that someone with shoulder discomfort can do, which can make a pretty immediate difference on the trail. And beyond just helping your shoulders, it can be really, really effective to help maintain movement efficiency, just to help you feel more comfortable. Um, and it's a really, really, really handy technique. Now, initially when you're doing this, it may seem like you're going excruciatingly slow, going up hills, trying to stick to this nose breathing pace. But if you stick with it, it'll get better. And it is something well worth exploring. And then the final point, and I left probably the most common sense one to last, and you probably all heard this before, is if you are getting shoulder discomfort, please go down to your local adventure store, get your pack fitted properly. You know, most hikers are pretty aware that your shoulder shouldn't be taking a huge amount of weight with your pack. It always will take a bit, but most of the weight should be around your hips. And if you haven't had your pack fitted before, that is something you definitely want to look at, as well as if you haven't had your pack fitted in a while, if it's been six months or a year or something like that, obviously the straps do come loose and the things get out of whack, your body shape will change. So it's probably worthwhile taking it down to your local adventure store and most people are pretty happy. Now, in the situation, if you don't have access to a store or whatever, you're going to have to go online and get some advice. It get, does get a bit tricky. I'm not going to go into that because that's not my jam so much, but you can find so much information online around that. But essentially, if you are struggling with shoulder pain when you're doing pack carrying, make sure you're doing regular, regular mobilization. Make sure you're looking at strengthening the upper body as well as those stabilizing muscles around the scapula. Make sure you're warming up before the trail. Make sure you're sticking to the nose breathing pace as much as you can and try to breathe with your belly expanding and obviously get your pack fitted. Put those five things together and I would not be surprised if it makes a significant difference to your shoulder discomfort and your shoulder pain when you are going out with a pack. And it is something that even if it's not going to help your shoulder specifically, all of that advice is great advice for any hiker out there who does want to, you know, get strong, stronger or more comfortable with their upper body. So I'd highly, highly, highly recommend you put that into action. Now, if you have been listening to this today and you're like, look, Rome, this sounds great. You know, I do get discomfort. You know, that does, that process does sound good to me. But you know what? As much as you've explained it to me today, I don't really know where I should start or how to put this all together into my own training or the training as a whole. Now, if that's your situation, basically this week, I have my open enrollment running for my signature program, which is the online summit program. Now, specifically, I'm looking for no more than 10 hikers who want to get strong and pain-free so they can conquer every adventure. So if you do struggle with this shoulder discomfort, if you want to upgrade your training, if you have a big trip coming up, or you just need extra help to get yourself moving and get in the best physical position for your adventures, I would absolutely love to hear from you. If you want to learn a little bit more about how this all works and what it's all about, find the Summit Strength page on Facebook or Instagram. Shoot me a message with the words, I'm interested, and we can have a chat about how it all works and we can see if and how the program might be a good fit for your particular situation and your particular goals. So if you are struggling, if you do need help, now's the time to reach out and I would absolutely love to hear from you. So thank you so much for listening today. I hope you have a lovely day and we'll talk to you very soon. Bye.